What is going on YouTube? In today's video, I will show you how to make phone calls to your users using the Raspberry Pi Pico W with the Twilio API. Now this is part two in the series where I discussed using Twilio API. First video, I showed how to use SMS. But in this one, I'll be discussing how to use programmable voice where you can send automated voice messages to the user, get input from the user, respond with appropriate messaging, and so much more. Now thankfully, Twilio makes it easy, highly customizable, and cost effective. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe before we get into it. And enough being said, let's hop in. Okay, so jumping into the MicroPython code, we just have this function here that you have to pass in certain information to allow you to make the programmable voice call. Now in this video, what I'm not going to go over is I'm not going to go over how to get the auth token, the account SID, because that is information you have when you set up your Twilio account, which I already went over in part one, the first video. So I'll just link that description or that video here in this card for you guys to watch. And also in that video, I go over to send SMS. So I think it'll be a cool thing for you guys to watch. And once you go over that, you'll notice that this function is actually very similar to the send SMS function. So the only difference between this function and the send SMS function is actually the payload we're putting to the function. So what we had before was we passed in a body that contained the text information that you want to send your user. In this case, what we're actually doing is we're passing a URL that hosts the set of Twimble instructions. Now you may be wondering what are Twimble instructions? Well, what Twimble instructions are, it's, it's just the Twilio markup language, which is a set of instructions that you can use to tell Twilio what to do when you receive an incoming call or SMS. So it's pretty much in the form of XML that contains some tags here that tells the automated voice recorder what to do, what inputs to receive from the user and so on. So you can do a lot of complicated things with this. And I'll just show you some of the examples here and I'll give you the basic tools to send you on your way to do what you want with this programmable voice. So let's just go back into the code and just show you one more time, like what's going on. So we do have to pass a URL that hosts this the Twimble instructions here. So that's clear. And I'll show you how to host such a URL easily and where to put your Twimble instructions. But other than that in this code, we're just connecting to the internet here. So we're passing in our internet name and our internet password and also our recipient phone number that we want to send. And then also what we're doing is we're just passing this headers, as I mentioned in the first video. And the data here, as you could see, we have the recipients, the sender, and the URL, which is this, the Twimble URL, okay? URL, I don't know why I said it like that. Then we just make the request here. And if you do make a successful request, you have all the information correct. You should see the phone call go through. So we'll go through this whole example end to end in this video. So as you can see in this function here, I called it, I passed my Twimble URL. So you may be wondering right now, how do I get such a URL? You know, you're a little confused, but it's actually really easy. And thankfully Twilio makes it easy to host your Twimble files with their, some, with their Twimble bins, which is a service they have that allows you to host them without having to do much. So I just go to my console and my Twilio accounts and I go to Twilio bins. I'll link this console in the description below so you can just go in and do that. And what you want to do is just create a new Twimble bin. So I just created a new Twimble bin. I can just call it whatever I want, Raspberry Pi test. And I'm just going to pass in their test example here. So of course we have the classic hello world. So this voice, this automatic voice is go going to call me and tell me hello world. That's all it's going to do for this example. So let's just do that. Let's create. And I'm just going to copy this URL. So this is saved. And if I copy this URL here and I go back to my code, I just paste that in. I think it's the same one. Oh, it's slightly different than my last one. And I have to put it in a string form because that's the input it's expecting. And then I go ahead and run this. I should get a call to my phone number. So let's put it on speaker and see what we get. Something to call me. Okay. Oh yeah, I think I got a Right, there we go. So I'm gonna put it on speaker. So you guys. You can have hear. a trial account. You can remove this message at any time by upgrading to a full account. Press any key to execute your code. Okay. So I'm going to execute. Let me just press one. Hello, world. And that's it. As simple as that. So that was just obviously a very simple example. Now let's do a slightly more complicated one, and that'll be it for this video. So as opposed to just saying something, what you can actually do is you can get a response from the user. You can gather up that response and actually put it in an API you have to do some form of processing. So this is actually re really powerful for IoT applications. So I already have this on the side, which I generated. So what we're gonna do instead here is we're going to say, hello, thanks for calling. And we're going to allow the user to input one, two, and three. And based on this input, we're actually going to send it to a dummy API I have. This actually doesn't work, but imagine you do have some uh, API for your node app or some back end where you send the inputs from the user and then your application does something with the user's information. So that's pretty much all it's doing here. So once it gets the, once it gathers the input from the user, it's actually going to attempt to set to post to this API, which in this case is not going to work, but I hope you get the gist of it. So I'm just going to save this. 
and go back to my application here. And we're just gonna run it again. I'm show you that it does work, but it will fail once I try to um, send the payload to the API. So it's, I think it's calling me. Cool. You can remove this message at any time by upgrading to a full account. Press any key to execute your code. Okay, let's execute again. Hello, thanks for calling. To speak to a customer service representative, press one to hear our business hours. Press two to hear address. Press three, we are sorry, an application error has occurred. Goodbye. Okay, so what you saw with that example is it took my input as one, but because I do have a faulty API here, it's it's going to throw me an error. But if you do have a workable post request in your back end, that should be fine. So this is just a second more involved example where you could see the, the powerful aspects of using the programmable voice for Twilio, which I think is very easy to set up. And there's many examples online, depending what, what you want to do for your application. So I hope you did learn something from this video and you could start setting up programmable voice to send your users. I think it's a very useful thing when you have this ability in your IoT applications. Maybe you want to call the user to check if they want to water their plant, that sort of thing. So I could definitely see this being uh, useful to some of your applications. If it was, please like, comment, subscribe if you learned something in this video. And let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, as always. And thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned.